Hi. Good to see you again. Hey, are you ready for another jam-packed art attack? Well, I hope so, because we've got all this jam to get through. There's a really fab way to remember your summer holidays. And check out the one that didn't get away with this big art attack. Plus, loads of great tips on how to get shadows in your pictures. Hey, have you ever found an old bird's nest that's fallen from a tree? Well, I've found an old nest here in the Art Attack studio. And you know what? Experts are working hard trying to decide what kind of nest it is. Because it's so unusual. So, excuse me, um, have you worked it out yet? It's most unusual to find a nest in these surroundings and climate. My colleagues and I are baffled. I know what that is. Dinosaur eggs. And they're simple to make in four easy parts. A four-part attack. Very interesting. For the first part, make the egg. So, blow up a balloon to about the size of a grapefruit, and resting the balloon in a mug helps to keep it steady while you're working. Then, using PVA glue mixed half and half with water, paste on a layer of tissue paper. Just slop the glue on, and then on goes the tissue paper. This is kitchen roll, and the idea is to go all over the balloon, in this way, right up to the knot. See that? So do two or three layers in this way, and when it's dry, like this, you can pop the balloon. So here we go. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> and this is your egg. But put this to one side for a moment, because you now need to make the hatching dinosaur. To make the dinosaur claws, make three small sausages of newspaper and tape them together at one end. Do the same again and you'll have two dinosaur claws. For the head, mould some more newspaper into a sort of pear shape and bend the thin end over to make a little beaky nose. This makes the top part of the head. For the bottom jaw, scrunch some newspaper into a rough triangle and tape that to the underneath of the head. Put plenty of tape on to keep it nice and steady. Then add two newspaper balls to the top of the head for eyes. So now you have all the parts to your dinosaur, you now need to make him hatch from the egg. Take some scissors and make jagged cuts around the opening of the balloon to look like a broken shell. But be careful not to make the hole too big. And you can always bend the edges of the shell back once they've been snipped to help you get your dinosaur inside. Then, put the dinosaur in. Start by taping the claws so that they are poking out either side of the hole. Again with the other one. And when they're secure, pop the dinosaur head between them and again use tape to hold it in position. Can be a bit fiddly, but get the tape in like that. Then just add a layer of PVA glue and tissue paper over the head and the claws to make it really solid. Cover the dinosaur and it's dry, you'll have this. But to bring it to life, you need to paint it like this. See what I've done here? I've painted the dinosaur green and the eggshell blue with purple dots and I've picked out all the detail with black pen. Cute, isn't it? Now all he needs is a nest. For the nest, cut out a circle of cardboard box card that's about the size of a dinner plate. Then scrunch up some long newspaper strips and wrap them around the outside of the circle, taping as you go to build up the edge of the nest. Again, use plenty of tape. When you're happy with the shape, give the whole thing a base coat of brown paint. Then, to give your nest a realistic effect, paste on some PVA glue and stick on handfuls of hay. Now, you can buy hay really cheaply from pet shops. 
It can be quite messy, so you might want to put some newspaper or a carrier bag down first. And just cover the whole nest inside and out, like this. Then simply place the dinosaur egg in the nest. And there he is. Looks good, doesn't he? And why not make two or three different types? Like this orangey one with a pointy bit at the back of his head. You often see dinosaurs with those, don't you? And look, he's coming out feet first. <laughs> Cute, aren't they? And guaranteed to baffle the experts. Try it yourself. Dinosaur eggs. So there I was, down by the quayside for a day's fishing. <laughs> Look at this. Looks like I've caught a big one. Go on, heave it in, boy. You can do it. <laughs> Look at this. Mm. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> but hey, you know the old saying, actions speak louder than words. Watch this. You've heard me go on about light and shade in pictures many times. And here's a simple picture of some shapes that I've done where I've shaded in the areas where there's no light. In fact, the light is coming from this direction, whether it's the sun or a lamp or any form of light, it's coming from here. So the shading is on the side that the light can't get to. But what about the shadows? 
Well, the shadows of the shapes themselves, they're not there. The shady side of the boxes are here, but what about the shadows that they cast? Well, everything casts a shadow, and the boxes should have a shadow here. Now, I know it's a bit of a worry when you've done a picture you're happy with. You don't want to spoil it, but go on, be brave, put the shadows in. So, OK, let's give it a go. Now, like the shading in your picture, the shadows are tucked down into those places that the light can't get to, and they're cast away from the light. So, OK, let's send the shadows flying off in this direction, and they get weaker the further away they get. So that's good. Make them slightly stronger down in the corners here, like that. And what about the shadow from this box here? Well, OK, it comes out here, and it'll go up that box there, like that. And what about this box here, just hang out, hanging over the edge, like that? And when you cast in a shadow, if there's something in the way, the shadow just simply goes up it and over it. And again, it gets weaker the further away it gets. So just do that disappearing off up there, like that. And some things get completely covered in other object shadows, like this little box here. And that's much better, much more realistic with shadows. Now, it's OK with boxes, but what about a real picture? OK, well, here's my street scene, and I've done the shading on the sides of the buildings facing away from the sun, where the sunlight can't get to. But what about the shadows cast by those buildings? OK, here goes. Let's be brave. Now, each building will cast a shadow, again, away from the direction of the sun. And again, it'll get weaker the further away it gets. Again, getting weaker as it gets away from the building. And the tower will be casting a shadow here. And it'll cast a shadow across the top of that building there. And don't forget, the chimneys will cast shadows across the roof. Again, going away from the direction of the sunlight. Across there. And the sunlight's coming in here. So that'll go across there like that. People cast shadows as well. And cars cast shadows. The lamppost there, that'll cast a shadow across the pavement, away from the sunlight, and it'll go up over the car, getting weaker the further away it gets. So just drag it down there a bit. And don't forget the overhangs of the buildings just under there. And there, a lot more realistic. So try it yourself. Be brave. Put shadows in your pictures. Where would we be without computers, eh? Well, I'll tell you where I'd be. Covered in mailbags. Full of your art attacks. But as it is, they're all in the art attack gallery. Let's have a look at them. Oh, yeah, look at this. Matthew's made this image of an eagle using cut pieces of tissue paper, some cotton wool and some beady eyes to give him a bird's eye view. <laughs> Very effective. And I love doing prints, and Sean's done a great one. Flowers and leaves are so easy to do, and the result, well, it speaks for itself. And this fun fish has been made by Lewis and Noor using very inventive ingredients. There's Cornwall balls, dried pasta, and even some dried kidney beans. Yeah, brilliant art attack from Lewis and Noor. <laughs> I bet they had fun sticking all those bits down. <laughs> and that's reminded me of a little trick I can show you for sticking things down. Have you ever run out of glue and you've only got sticky tape? But you want to keep your artwork nice and clean. You don't want tape all over it. Well, here's a really simple idea. Take a piece of tape, then wrap it around your finger, sticky side out, like that. And there you have a perfect double-sided tape loop, ready to pop onto the back of whatever you're sticking. There. Look at that. Good day. 
and really simple. And this technique is really handy if you're putting up posters or sticking photos and things into scrapbooks. Just wrap your tape round your finger, sticky side out, don't forget that, and then pop your tape loop on the back and watch this. There it is, all nice and neat. Look at that, and not one bit of tape showing. Anyway, let's have a look at some more of your wear. Naomi's image proves that you can make an art attack out of just about anything, even on your computer. This print is really cool and psychedelic. Nice one, Naomi. And look at this. This picture by Polly has been made using a technique called marbling. It's a tricky process, which gives the impression of coloured oils mixed in water. Brilliant effect, though. And look at this lovely, delicate art attack by Ellen. She's used a leaf motif to make a monoprint. The overall effect reminds me of autumn leaves. And look at this. Tom looks like he's made his art attack after being inspired by a summer holiday. He's painted a beach scene with golden sands and a beautiful deep blue sea. Ah, oh, great holiday picture, Tom. Do you know what? That's given me a fun idea. Making a map with a difference. A holiday map. No, not a map to show you how to get there. It's a map that you make that's a great souvenir of your holidays. Just start by collecting any little bits and pieces that you pick up along the way when you're on holiday, like postcards or tickets for things that you've seen. Then, while you're on holiday, make a rough map of all the places that you go to or that are in your resort. Now, it only needs to be really rough. I made this one over the two weeks I was on holiday. Now, there was my hotel. I went to the fairground over there, and that was just at the end of the beach. And there was a fantastic chippy in the town there. Spent a lot of time there. And on one day, my family dragged me to a pottery museum. Boy, was it boring. But anyway, it gave me a bit more time to put more detail on my map. Now, turn all of these bits and pieces into a holiday map. Copy all of the main bits neatly onto some white paper. So, draw a little picture to represent each place that you visited. So, I'm starting with the hotel. And then, I went to the fairground. With a big wheel. And I'll draw in the road. And then down the end of the road, we arrived at the beach. And I built some sandcastles. They were very good ones, though. <laughs> then we went down another road to my favourite place, the chip shop. Cracking fish and chips there, I tell you. And then finally, we went to the boring museum. And when you're happy with it, colour it in. Now you can do this any way you want. Paint it, crayons, but I used felt-tip pens. Nice bright colours there. Then, take all the bits that you've collected and place them onto your map. So there's the ticket for the museum, and a token for the fairground, a chip shop fork, mm -hmm. shells that are brought from the beach shop, three of those, I think, and an empty shampoo bottle that I used at the hotel. And then finally glue everything down into position. Use a nice strong glue for this. On it goes. Into position. And there it is. Your holiday map. Oh, it brings it all back to me now. <laughs> oh, and one finishing touch is to back it onto some cardboard to make it nice and sturdy. And you know, you can do a holiday map for wherever you go on holiday. How about this one of a holiday to Egypt? And I've even stuck on my aeroplane ticket and some foreign money. And how about a weekend in the countryside? I've added on some acorns and a compass, cos I kept getting lost. <laughs> ta -ra. Listen up for more fun with Martha Speaks. Can you help me get dinner? You. Word Girl. <laughs> Good work, Word Girl. Watch Martha Speaks at 6 and Word Girl at 6.30 Tuesdays and Thursdays on TVO Kids. TVO Kids, this is my brand new beagle puppy. His name is...